who's here? Chris Butler? Of course, he's here. Go ahead. Nice. Good morning. This is Chief Butler. The victim in this case is Clyde King, white male, 73. The suspect in this case is Richard Green, white male, 44. We'll get uh, Richard Green's criminal history for you after the press conference with the police information officer. On Monday, December 29, 2014, at 1.29 p.m., the victim's brother reported the victim missing because around Christmas, December of 2014, he would normally hear from his brother, but he hadn't this time. So the missing persons unit began an investigation, and during the course of their investigation, that led us to the suspect. We interviewed the suspect. The suspect said that he last saw the victim on Christmas Eve, and he was fine. The relationship between the victim and the suspect, the victim actually owns a landscaping business, and the victim was employed by him for at least a year and a half. So they had a relationship, an ongoing relationship uh, with each other. The victim, or the suspect in this case, actually continued to run the business uh, for a period of time, um, like business was usual. During this course of him running the business, he committed multiple economic crimes against the business and the victim to include fraud, uttering, forgery, and other crimes. While our investigation continued, we were working with Lee Griffin, who's a supervisor with the probation office, and we also learned that the suspect wore a GPS angle monitor. On January 25th, probation supervisor Griffin was following up on the GPS track, and that led us to the 11,000 block of St. John's Industrial Parkway, and at which time probation supervisor Griffin discovered a shallow grave. Mr. Griffin telephoned us when we responded to that location where we exhumed the victim. We continued to build the case, and on February 3rd, the suspect was arrested for the economic crimes that he had committed during the course of the time that he was running the business. The suspect has remained incarcerated since then. The medical examiner ruled the death a homicide. The cause of death was smothering. On December 4th, our records show that the victim's defibrillator shows three events within five minutes. And according to a cardiologist, this is when the victim died. Also, the GPS tracking system that the suspect wore places him in the residence on December 4th as well. The suspect was interviewed. He told us that he found the victim dead. He continued to run the business and buried the victim in a shallow grave. And I'll answer any questions that you might have. Dan Scanlon, Times Union. Sounds like a lot of electronic tracking, both internal to the victim and external on the suspect, helped tie this down to the almost to the minute. Oh, absolutely. Uh, technology played a huge part in solving this case. Um, as you mentioned, and as already mentioned in the statement, you have the defibrillator, uh, which shows the three events that happened, as well as a GPS tracking device, uh, which places him, um, our investigation shows it places him uh, near the shallow grave in the house, Yes. Haley Winslow, Channel 4. Didn't he know he had an ankle monitor on? Uh, I'm sure he knew that he had an uh, ankle monitor. He was on probation for a uh, sexual battery that occurred in a jurisdiction south of us. So I'm sure he was well aware of it because he was you know, following up with probation and everything. So. How did he think yeah. he was going to get away with this? Though? Don't have an answer for you. Eric Jeez. Bennett, Action News. Um, you said that he was 73 and the report says he's 72. Can you clarify his age? Um, I'll make sure. When I did the addition, it's, I, I came up with 73, but we'll confirm that. Okay. Jacob Wong, Channel's boss. Did you say the actual homicide took place in early December? So fourth, so our victim was in the shallow grave probably five or six weeks. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm missing it. Why is the arrest of, for the homicide just now happening? Um, with this case, as, you, as I just mentioned, he was in the ground for five or six weeks. So you have things that happen to the body, such as you know decomposition and everything, um, as well as building the electronic case we had against him and, and also getting the uh, defibrillator and getting the cardiologist to uh, look at those results. So it takes a little time. And he did talk to you about, he admitted to burying the body in the shallow grave. He did. Did he talk about a motive, about what caused, what motivated him to smother the victim? Um, no, I mean, he did make other statements and everything. Um, I don't believe he actually got to that point with us. Um, like I said, his story has been that he found him dead in the residence. And then he just continued to run the business. It all comes down to uh, you know, financial motive on behalf of the suspect, just uh, financial gain for him. 
Any other questions? Can we ask about something else? Wow. Um, any updates on the Chestnut Avenue case? No. no. Thanks, Chief. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Chief.